All right, um, yo, it's it's late at night. I've always wanted to do this, so I'm recording a video. Uh, it'll be up on YouTube, and I'm live on Twitter Spaces. All right. Yeah, wanted to do this for a bit of time now. It's called um, the history of the cousins who are. Um, it's money, it's language, biology. And uh, man-made innovation uh, and how these things interrelate. Um, you know, it, it's it's important to. You know, like everything has got an evolutionary trail. There's 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 a trail of where anything and everything comes from. And uh, oops, uh, I'm not sure what's going on on my Twitter there. All right, okay, cool. All right. Um, so there's a story of 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 um, where everything comes from. Everything has got a has got a history. People have got a history. We've got parents. We've got grandmothers, uh, grandfathers, and they've also got you know uh, parents, so on and so forth. And I want to show how you know everything is conjoined. Um, human beings being you know. Um, the innovators, we, we were the ones who created the cars, we are the ones who created all this innovation. So it seems that um, we are the species, rather the only species that can innovate uh, layers upon layers. So it's been found that, um, well, other animals do innovate. Um, chimpanzees, um, they sometimes, you know, would carve out sticks uh, so to sort of uh, make... Uh, Spears to go out and you know hunt mammal. Uh, simply birds do innovate. What they do is they well they build nests. That's a um, you know I normally see nests and I think you know that's some um, some innovation there. You know um, I guess it's 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 uh, ingrained into 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 their biology. At birth, <clears throat> and you know the stories of other animals doing in some other forms of innovations um or and w when i say innovation i mean it in a man-made sense yes biology does innovate uh, so we are human beings so all these other living species um they are an innovation of nature so on top of that we as human beings we can make you know manipulate whatever nature has created um and, and create other innovations we've done so with cars with you know we can innovate uh, wood and make chairs so we've, we've got you know that capability and we do it levels upon levels although chimpanzees can make um, spears uh, although birds can make nests you know it's, it's i would say it's just to that simple layer but we, as we as human beings we take it layer upon layer from uh, making just a simple chair with wood um, we can you know later on someone creates a motor engine they infuse that it becomes a um, a wheelchair um, electric wheelchair uh, which is run by 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 a motor and from there on the same motor i guess um, it's infused in a car we put a chair into a car it's infused in an aeroplane which, uh, which is an innovation that flies uh, different to a car and then it, it, um, it it's incorporation layers upon layers of, of innovation so that's what we human beings do and you know our, our capability so um, as I said we we have uh, an evolutionary trail we come from um, um, you know the great ape family uh, chimpanzees are we could say our indirect um, cousins um they've got at the you know we, we there's a point where we we diverge they went you know that way um and then we went our way so um when i keep looking at some some data you know just hard sometimes just to cram all these things um but i'll present them in a in a very simplified understandable not so uh, filled with terminology kind of trail. I think that I would leave, you know, for what I write. But basically, how I got to, you know, speaking about, you know, the history of money, the history of uh, innovation, 
um, the issue of, of, of language is that, uh, well, my, my f- uh, sixth and seventh book, seventh book being Innovate the Next, uh, which is about success frameworks of innovations. And the other one is called Understanding the Fourth Industrial Revolution and Innovation Easily. That's the sixth book. So it kind of comes from that. And now I, I guess I'm taking it further, but I'm I'm infusing several things in the, in those uh, in, in 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 those books, and then sort of taking it forward. Now, all right, let's. So about three point three million as million years ago, uh, there was our ancestor called uh, Australopithecus, and sometimes I get. <laughs> The, uh, the pronunciation of 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 of, of um, some of these terms a bit wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not so good with cramming numbers, and and and, and um, you know my vocab as well doesn't do so well with with a lot of um, um, terminology. So, all right. So, the one of the earliest evidence of human innovation is stone tools, age three point. Three million years ago, found in Kenya. Um, so that's the earliest, uh, you know, example of 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 um, innovation. So meaning, kind of like um, apes are able to, I mean, chimpanzees rather, they are able to carve sticks and innovate. Uh, kind of like um, birds can make nests. Human beings, or rather, our 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 of our, our line uh, which is called the homo we are called homo sapiens so astrophilicus was was an ancestor before you know the genus homo so genus homo is filled with you know homo sapiens i'm sure you've heard of the neanderthals um, and then homo erectus and then the others right so 3.3 million years ago stone tools were found so meaning our great ancestors could innovate to to an, an extent so remember uh, sapiens only came about between 200 and 300 um, years ago that's you know the the evidence available of where human beings um, of how long we you know relatively have been around and alive so you can imagine from that point on 3.3 million years ago uh, moving down the line until you know the genus homo um, evolves meaning from astroli astrolophe <laughs> up until which is another genus um, um, and then up until our genus um, um, homo which you know the earliest uh, ancestor in the homo genus is the homo erectus who lived about you know 1.9 to 2 million years ago so all these innovations were happening uh, from stone tools, uh, the stone tools got a bit complicated. You can imagine up until now, today, in 2022, there's millions of innovations that, you know, we have made, or rather humanity, you could say, the genus Homo has made, even our, our ancestors. You know, they just, 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 just have been compounding and compounding and converging and diversifying. We've got phones, we've got tables, we've got all manner of tables, we've got... Um, cars uh, now um, what do you call those cars uh, flying cars and development well there's aeroplanes there's trains all this sort of innovations all these things have been you know available for all this um, millions of well i mean they've been evolving for millions of of, of of years so it means biologically we are gifted to innovate you know we simply make a chair like i've given an example someone makes a motor engine and then we can um, combine that chair with a motor engine it becomes a wheelchair that motor engine is taken into um, an airplane an airplane becomes even those chairs are you know incorporated into that um, that airplane so we, we innovate layer by layer layer by layer so like I was saying, from 3.3 million years ago up until now, it means um, we've been, you know, getting a bit intelligent, right? Intelligent because this is an evolutionary trait. Now, um, 
these innovations were getting a bit more complex and complex and complex. And now some of them is really hard to imagine that um, they could have been made without language because, um, well, let me, let me get into language a bit. Let me just speak about language a bit. Or rather communication. I would say, you know, all animals uh, communicate in one way or the other. Trees also do, you know, some sort of uh, communication. Um, but, you yeah, know, that's besides what I'm, what I'm talking about. But you can look into that. So, um, animals usually hang out in, in herds, in groups. And uh, they've got like a common purpose, which is, you know, to to survive. Lions do that. Uh, you know, sometimes they collaborate. Different animals, obviously, have got, you know, different levels of collaboration. So sometimes they collaborate to to stay alive, I guess, um, survival. So we human we human beings also have got that, you know, we, we get together to survive. We, we, we hang out in, in groups, in heads, uh, because... Um, you know that's that's how we survive. You know, uh, two is better than one, right? Now, and imagine our great ancestors were making all these tools, uh, stone tools uh, for hunting, um, for for all for their different uses. And um, as 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 they are innovating all these different things that serve utility to them, and, and then you wonder. Some of these innovations, um, it, it's hard to imagine them outside of language. So I was saying that all other animals do communicate in one form or another. Um, usually it's through um, gestures. So, you know, there are several st studies that have compared that, you know, animals do have um, usually over 40. It was about, it was what, the, the particular one I saw, it was about apes. They've got over um 40 sorry chimpanzees i keep saying apes chimpanzees over 46 or so uh gestures that you know we human beings or rather research has has, has um, identified right and uh, they communicate with these gestures you know you sometimes see lions rubbing against each other just i don't know maybe to show affection or Whatever is it that uh, they're trying to show. So that's their way of, 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 of communicating. Uh, they also make, you know, sounds uh, when they are happy, when they, um, I guess, toying around, playing around. So th those, 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 uh, those gestures, those sounds are a way of, I guess, communicating. Human beings, we've got that. But now remember, we've got a, a cognition that can create... Uh, tools meaning we can abs we can have an abstract thought and then turn that thought into reality i can think of oh, okay how this is how i'm going to kill um my prey so that i can go eat and then i'll devise okay maybe i can sharpen this stick it's an abstraction or and then tomorrow i could be thinking you know i need some i need some sort of improvement uh maybe I'll then i'll you know carve stone it's called napping i'll nap a stone uh <clears throat> And then that's how how ancestors have been doing it. They've been finding all these different tools, uh, maybe manipulating stone. Obviously, first it was manipulating sticks, wood, and then uh, later on the stones. Obviously, you know, um, along the evolutionary trail, um, you know, different minerals were 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 um, were found, and they could then be made, and then steel came along, and you know, you can imagine. Uh, let, let's take it back um, you've got sticks or you've got wood to make you know hunting objects and then therefrom you discover that you know there's this thing called flintstone flintstone can make uh, sharper objects than, than wood and then along the line you know we discover that um, we can actually mine certain minerals and make steel so steel is it is a sub sharp object is better than the two all right now as it um, as it goes as it as it goes forward, um, like I was saying, that our innovations get uh, more and more complex, and it's hard to imagine them outside of language. So we we, we can make all these abstract thoughts. Uh, we can innovate all these things that we've been innovating as are evidence that three point three million years ago, stone tools were found. The fire along the line was found uh, supposedly by 
uh, Homo erectus, which is like um, the earliest uh, ancestor in the genus Homo, which is a, a genus that we Homo sapiens, which is humans, we belong to that. And then, right? You'd think, okay, so you'd think language, you know, language also evolved. So there are two um, 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 sort of studies of, of language. The one is called uh, the discontinuity theory and the other is called uh, this continuity theory, which is more of an evolutionary one. So um, the discontinuity theory says that language came about 100 years ago and then it just, you know, came out or fell out of the sky and then it did multiply it amongst uh, amongst you know uh, humans which 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 you know it, it goes against the logic of um the evidential logic of um evolution everything evolved so i believe also language evolved you know in a simple sense we could make all these different sounds that, that other animals can make and then those sounds we attach meaning to them imagine just a, a tribe of um of 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 our early ancestors they could make you know sounds and then now they'd start attaching uh, meanings to different sounds to denote what that those sounds mean right uh for instance um a simple sound like a, in, a, in a, the basic sense remember everything starts in in the most basic sense um, computers started in, in the most basic sense they could do less activities than they do today and then they got more complex and complex just kind of like how innovation works human or man-made innovation it gets more complex and as, as human beings also it seems that we also got uh, more complex we can make complex innovation so think of it this way let's say a simple tone like ah ah let's say we can uh, infer that it means small tree and then uh, when i drag it it could mean um, a medium tree and then when i drag it a bit again over and above the two uh, tones it means a big tree for example ah means a small tree ah means a medium tree ah <laughs> means a bigger tree so you know that's i think how also language could have evolved from simplicity um, tonal sounds and now we also now figure out you know instead of just making sounds we can actually make words right and then kind of like you know even the word word is a word but now um, we in a small tribe we know that this word has got this meaning another tribe elsewhere in the world or on earth could also make a word but and, and then it could be a word for word and then it doesn't it, it wouldn't sound the same because we're not it's not invented um by the same people or that it's not like um we are conjoined in the head to say when we denoted language this is how language will sound and will be the same so um because i said i'm saying it's a language evolved so it happened in different parts of the world by different parts of um animals or, um, or, or the genus homo members right and also i think that's how also language evolved um you know there are different arguments in terms of it started with erectors or it came it started with uh, later ancestor neanderthals or even sapiens but i believe you know looking at the complications of the innovations made by homo erectors i would say perhaps Either it began with them or at least it began a bit before and then it was evolving into, you know, a language which had some bit of, um, I don't want to say complexity, but complexity as compared to maybe Australopithecus, right? And I'm not saying it started with Australopithecus, I'm saying, or rather, I'm not also saying it started, I, 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 I slightly, or not slightly, actually more, believe that it started with, with the Erectus and then so it's 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 in between there like the the measurement of when it could have happened it's it's quite difficult you know the thing with with um looking back and in, in history and trying to make points on it or what this is what could have happened at this time is it's quite difficult because you're working in backwards and time is actually moving forward so i i i i believe i think most of the arguments say that it started with uh, erectors well language at least it started developing 
um, from there on, right? Um, you know, there was, yes, just general communication, but um, a language in terms of making sounds, maybe also delving into making uh, words, right? And then la different tribes would have their different ways, and then one tribe maybe will interact with another tribe and then steal a couple of things from them and then so that it could go in incorporating their language and then maybe one tribe innovates something that another tribe doesn't have and then what happens uh, obviously maybe say they meet up and then when they meet up they oh, okay you call this a spear we'll also call it a spear because you are the first one to invent it kind of like that so that's that's you know the interchange of of, of man-made innovation and uh, language so imagine so lang here's what also language does. It, it, it enables uh, me or, or it, 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 allow, it um, allows um, animals, in this case, um, the line of human beings, you know, going back to even Australopithecus, Erectus, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals. This is what I say that uh, language um, facilitated or rather made it easy for innovations to be remade meaning i can make a spear and then now i show it to my former times men how to make it with just gestures and i'm adding a bit of sounds and then when we've developed language language also i think develops around there uh, when we develop language and then it's easier to articulate uh, how that innovation is made even more especially if it's complex right to the next person and then again think of it this way with language i can go to a say a seamstress and say to them or you know articulate a, an idea for a dress uh, or suit that i want in an in articulate means so take away language i wouldn't be to be able to articulate the idea of that dress that doesn't exist let's call it a novel uh, idea for a dress or a suit Without um, language, it will be very, you know, difficult to go and articulate um, that idea. So language helps to articulate even novelty, right? And uh, I think that's how, you know, language contributed. It allowed many further innovations to be created, novel ideas to be created and existing innovations at, that, at those, you know, moving different points to be remade and improved and taught kind of like that you teach me something with language how to make something with language and then i go teach it um, to the next person with language and then the other you know the next person might articulate how we can improve uh, articulate it verbally with language with words with with sounds how we can you know improve it so it's it's a marriage this thing so innovation our ability to our political gift of innovating things upon layer upon layer is assisted by what? By language. And also language is an invention. Also language is a innovation. So we innovated language because our biology allowed us to get into that mode of evolving and uh, creating language and, you know, making it more dense and complex. So if you think of man-made innovation and language as, as a, as a complementing marriage that helps the two go forward, right? Innovations, uh, when, when, you, when we innovate different things that don't exist yet, the more they add, we assign them what? Names. And then those names become part of the lexicon of um, innovation, right? Um, and language, like I was saying, it's also an innovation. It's also an invention. So they move hand in hand interchangeably they're interdependent now imagine all these different innovations that have been being made like from 3.3 .3 million years ago also language being part of them and uh, i'm talking now by about the physical innovations right we need to one tribe is able to make spears the other tribe maybe is able to make um hand axes right and then we they realize that you know man instead of fighting we can teach other, each other how to make um, these things or we can uh, exchange these things. Now, that's when barter comes along, right? It's barter exchange. It's a form of money. Barter is also money. Maybe 
that's where the start of money becomes commodity money it's, it's sorry it's not commodity money it's bartering i give you a hand axe you give me a spear um right or maybe i invade your tribe or pillage your tribe and then i find all these other innovations and um maybe you know because we are savage as human beings there's been a lot of killing maybe there's killing maybe some of the tribe members survive and then they i start questioning them maybe we don't speak the same language but with gestures we can you know sort of get along or maybe even in combat i see how you're using your hand axe and you're seeing how i'm using my spear in that sort of sense it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a some sort of transaction but now let's take away the violence and let's just say it's a we see the beneficial or the benefit of trading or bartering and that's money actually so uh when we've got all these different innovations of physical things or man-made things and then we've got language so language helps us communicate and butter those things and buttering it's where money comes into the picture like it's just a nutshell actually um and i'm all these things i'm saying i'm, I'm working on a book uh it doesn't have a title yet maybe It'll be along the lines of uh, the biological genesis of, of money and innovation or something or along those lines. So it, it's in line with these things. Um, so most of the things that I'm saying, um, I've got um, uh, trackings or indexes of, you know, the different um, evidences and papers that say, you know, this. Uh, so, you know, this is what happened 400,000 years ago. This is what happened 3.3 million years ago with 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 pointing to the evidence so that's the book part but here i guess it's just me you know explaining so money comes into the picture when you know different tribes are innovating different things they see they need to buy the trade <coughs> exchanging you know butter trade is the exchange of goods for goods ideas transaction and it needs language it needs gestures even if you don't understand each other's language gestures can help us right because we see the functional value in in each other's innovations and then we want to exchange right and being human beings being creative beings uh we start saying what you know this part exchange is quite tedious right and then because we are growing a mind of ab abstractions maybe i find uh, seashells to be something amazing something of bit of valium and then in the area that i stay at i find they are a bit scarce and then we just say okay we're gonna denote these things into money or maybe we carve them you could it could have happened in many ways but obviously beads and seashells were one of the currencies at, at some point so <coughs> excuse me oh, let me drink a bit of water So, the discovery of, 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 of commodity money, which is seashells, beads, could have happened in any other form, right? <clears throat> um, maybe one tribe appreciates those seashells and they see them of value, or at least one tribe wants them, and the other tribe has got them, and then they say, oh, okay, I will call this uh, maybe they're not calling it money but in essence in practice they denote uh, the status of money to it uh, unknowingly maybe unconsciously right which i'm sure it's how things happen and then mm, we've got we move from butter trade to commodity money at least seashells they are a bit divisible because that's one of the requirements of, of, of money that they're divisible you can carry them around and then also there are beads which are hard to make seashells i'm sure at some point certain tribes uh, it was hard for them to find them you know so but pro perhaps for other tribes it wasn't so hard but now if they are not so hard and that tribe goes and trade with say my tribe which finds uh, seashells hard to find right um, and then to them they are in you know abundance that will inflate uh, the value um is it inflate or deflate Def deflate so, so it causes inflation actually so meaning they're taking everything i'm making maybe i'm making spears but they're just coming with seashells and they're in abundance to them so that sort of lowers 
um, once I discover that these people, you know, or at least that the seashells that they give me, I can't trade with them because to them they are of lower value because they are in abundance with them, right? And then they won't accept them because they know that they're taking spears and then they don't see the value of those seashells so they won't take them. So that's why I still, oh, okay, here there's a problem. Maybe the seashells are not really the best thing, right? So and then it comes another challenge that also needs to be solved. Maybe beads come in place. We see that beads are hard to make. Think of, um, you know, Bitcoin. There's a thing in Bitcoin called mining. So I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of um, how um, transactions are confirmed. And it's a bit of a hard project because it requires a bit of electricity, a bit of computational uh, mathematics. So it's it's kind of like the difficulty of, 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 you know, creating new Bitcoins, the verification of it, right? And so we call it mining. So they realize, okay, now we can make actually precious metals like gold and gold is hard to get. So at least gold is commodity money. They discovered, oh, okay, gold is hard. Because I'm even like I'm, I'm jumping to gold. I'm missing a lot of different points, you know, I'm just giving like a, sort of an umbrella quick glance right and we found oh, okay gold is hard to mine so meaning there's some value into that no one can just rapidly produce it and um, cause inflation right so we attach a new a higher value to it so that you know when we when 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 i when i give you my spears and give me your gold i know this gold I can travel anywhere, I'll still be able to exchange it. So that's commodity money, right? It also, money's got an evolutionary trail. It started with butter trade, um, it's, and then it went to commodity money, which is gold, um, which is uh, seashells, beads. Obviously, all those different denominations of, of money, um, or rather different um, makes of money, they've got their own advantages and disadvantages seashells you know disadvantage beads at some point disadvantage gold uh, so far it has proven to be you know a holder of of of, of value so it's because a chemical lead can be faked it can be um it's just chemical is just a, a unique mineral right you, you can't send fair uh, is it? Is it synth, synth, I want to say it's synthetic. You know, you can make synthetic gold. You know, there's just the gold uh, that even if you say you can make synthetic gold, it's not gold. But you know, there's real gold, right? So it's it's so far in history, it has proven to be that uh, kind of of currency. Now, obviously, along the lines. Uh, different things are being innovated, uh, mathematics or logics of counting uh, being innovated. Um, the one that we have is one, two, three, up to nine and the zero. And then there were other forms of counting, like for example, I hear that in African tradition, how uh, money, sorry, not uh, how cows were counted is that uh, when they will go out of a crawl, uh, when the first one goes out, I'll throw a stone, second one, another stone. And then when they come back, I'll, I'll, I'll reverse the procedure, meaning the one that goes in first, a stone, a stone. And then if a stone, um, if those stones don't match up to the count or at least the, the, the count, yes. Yeah. It means maybe one cow is missing or two is missing or, you know, they need to be found. So that was one dimension of how counting was at a certain point obviously through innovation mathematicians one up to nine was invented and one up to nine paper also was invented and then we started getting into paper money so obviously um you know most parts of the world paper money was like um gold certificates so instead of carrying around gold because we need flexibility with money you need agility uh, banks will hold, and that's how banks came about. They'll hold gold, and then they'll issue out certificates, and then those certificates, so people started just trading with them, and then they realized, oh, okay, from 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 uh, uh, from gold certificates, and then they actually can be. My novel is some of this history. I'm just um, 
adding my own um, abstraction just to make it easier to understand. I'm sure you understand. You do get the evolutionary trail here that I, that I'm seeing because everything evolves, right? Um, it, it evolves from uh, necessity, utility, functionality. We always go for functional things. What functions better than the other thing? That's what we go for as humans. And um, I think it's after the World War II. Um, it was because the, most of the world was on the gold standard. And then it was decided that the world will go on a... Uh, on the, on the fiat standard, the fiat means it's decreed money, meaning uh, government imposed money. So we are on a fiat standard. The South African rand, the dollar, it's fiat, right? It's not um, it's not reserved necessarily in gold. It's just it's a system. It's a counting system, but that um, it's 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 um, um, taking care of governments and its reserve banks, right? So it's this is decreed money. So that's the evolution of money. So meaning money allows all those innovations we've been making all those millions of years ago. Um, language has helped us to trade them, us to remake them, us to articulate novelty in making other new innovations. And then comes money, which is um, a medium of exchange of those innovations. Right? And then... That's 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 the relation between the three um, man-made innovations, um, money and language. That's they they are, they've, they've got a relationship. They're interdependent. Um, and and maybe let me touch on 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 biology. Um, in innovate the next, I did a thing. Called, I created um, a pyramid. I called the human grid pyramid. But in what that pyramid, I think for the context of this topic now is uh, inclination so as human beings we've got inclinations we've got inclinations for for sugar we've got inclinations for love we've got inclinations for uh, expressing love through language right so all these inclinations they mirror our biology we've got an innate need for for all these different inclinations or at least we can get attached to all these men of different things so I say innovations to be successful, they need to mirror biology. They need to mirror our natural inclinations. Uh, an example, um, say what? Sugar, right? Uh, we've got an inclination for sugar because sugar plays a role in a part of our evolution. Our ancestors used to um, consume it as a need and then we got, you know, uh, you know the... the, 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 the argument is that we got sort of addicted to it and then also because we can innovate we can make synthetic things we started making synthetic sugar obviously sugar was coming from fruits right sweet fruits and then that's why we still like sugar up until so we've got an inclination for it right biological so all these innovations that are sugary they mirror our biological inclinations for for sugar uh you can think of what is it another inclination say pornography um it mirrors our inclinations for for sex or sexual uh, um um inclinations or lust you know i don't know what to call it yeah and uh, what else um a car inclination wise say i want to go see my lover i need a car it helps me get there faster also a horse uh we had an inclination for horses because horses could you know you know get to other places faster than us uh walking because we'd get tired we can't run all all, all the way Ooh -wee. yeah <laughs> and obviously cars you know replaced horses as because they are better uh, our functional cognition our intelligence can recognize that uh, cars are more efficient than horses so that's who we are. We've got a hierarchical view of the world. What's better? And then we tend to go for it. Drug addicts, um, they've got inclination for these drugs. Right? So you could say drugs, heroin, all these other drugs, they mirror human inclinations. Otherwise, they wouldn't work. So inclinations, it's, it's everything. Marriage. Um, 
it's an inclination maybe we marry for love maybe we marry for duty or maybe for we marry for coexistence for reproduction or repro- they need to, repro- to reproduce for sex it's ingrained in us um, biologically right we enjoy sexual activities and then sexual activities do produce uh, children and then you know that's how human beings stay alive we keep reproducing so that inclination to mate and make um, uh, um, children it's wired in us right and then love again other inclinations uh whether directly or indirectly love lust, all of them they're there right all these different inclinations so uh, we've got a mind that's inclined to innovate layer upon layer uh, aggressively so i think and then when those innovations or inventions are successful we say they mirror our biology and then they stay in use because they mirror our biology and because also they fulfill our inclinations right that's the story of, of of innovation and then we need to trade all these different innovations that we have our inclinations are fed by all these different innovations because they mirror our biology when they're successful and hence we use them so it's like i'm saying it's an interchange this relationship it's it's a interdependent marriage and then money money helps us transact when people are um transacting for prostitutes all this inc- it's inclinations at play money plays a factor it's a store of value it's an ex- it, 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 it has value and then i can give it to you it's agile more especially fiat money and then you or digital money well it's still fiat money but kept in bank transactions when i do an eft right um money it's a store of value think of it that way and then i pass it to the next person who gives me uh maybe it could be this a bottle it could be a car could be anything right sexual favor whatever it is money is a store of value you can exchange for that so money is that and then also language plays a a factor language remembers not only just um, i mean communication is not only just spoken language it's just just um I don't know, writing via email all these things so i'm just showing you the interdependent the connectedness of these cousins or at least what i call cousins money language innovation and biology they are they are mirror the first it starts with our biology to innovate and do it layer upon layer better than the chimpanzees our cousins they love uh, a banana shake, but they can't invent the blender. You know, <laughs> I lose make that joke. Um, so that's that, right? We innovate layer by layer, and we innovate by our inclination. So we just do things, and then when we realize, oh, okay, this thing has got utility, it means it meets our inclinations, um, and it becomes an innovation, an invention, and we use it. And then we use language to transact it and we also use money, right? That's the marriage of, of, of this. It's 43 minutes, right? I thought I was going to just be in short for maybe uh, 30 minutes, but I'm, you know, a bit close to finishing. You know, just just a, a snap of, 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 uh, of, of what I said I'm, I'm working on. <clears throat> All right, uh, so money now, as we see today, um, it's different, it's taking different turns. Um, obviously, fiat currency, it's state decreed, it's not necessarily based on anything unlike gold. Gold is the, the, the money, and then we can. There was a point when um, banknotes, coins were based on gold, meaning supposedly it was that when a reserve bank issues money it should be according to the value of the gold they've got in their reserve banks and then obviously they moved to, to fiat currency which allowed government just to print money i guess actually just they just printed money uh, you know obviously if you print too much of it it might lose a value many dynamics are, in, are involved in that i don't want to get into it um you could say this united states just prints a lot of money but now most of the world uses the u.s dollars so it's always in 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 demand imagine if south africa was just to print money it, the, the value of our money because it's not a, a reserve currency it's not a trade currency 
it will lose money because people will be saying these people are just printing money so meaning the value of our money will be going down because it's not in demand unlike the the US dollar US dollar is always in demand because the countries use it to trade you know with each other they convert their currency to the dollar and then whoever they're trading with also accepts those dollars and so the US dollar is always so in demand so they've got it they've got that leverage to to print money so as they say but it's a bit of a complicated um uh, topic well maybe not so complicated but let me not so much so much get into it in this you know this there's still many of this to come and workshops that I'll, I'll be doing which will be more detailed with you know detailed examples specifics of papers um kind of like that right if if, if, if with illustrations of of, of of evidence maybe in a bit more detail than now because now i'm just doing like a, a run around so we've got into a point where uh because look i remember in south africa when it was jacob zuma's time he changed the minister of finance as the minister of finance i think so um and the currency just went down right so that's the danger with fiat money because we, we give it to politicians who can just do sometimes as they please so because the state controlled imagine trusting one person to make all these phys- fiscal decisions and then uh, i think 10 12 years ago bitcoin is made which is the de- central decentralized currency is not centralized like uh, fiat currency so meaning it's people transacting with that uh, money which is protected by all this uh, blockchain technology also i won't get into the explanation of that but um what what it, what what it's what what it's doing is that it makes it hard for transactions to be faked so far bitcoin has been you know working i don't want to say just smoothly but uh no major hiccups um any bit of hiccups um you know because it's decentralized different people independent people working on it you and i can just go and work work on it they fix the problems so i think it's been so good um i think it's, it's a bit of a currency yes it is a currency i think uh but it's decentralized so it's competing with centralized money right and uh you know it's competing so i think we are in a because innovation have to have to, co- have to compete because now you know it's, it's you can lose your money with fiat money all of it i'm not saying we can't lose it with bitcoin but Remember what the hyperinflation that uh, happened in Zimbabwe because, you know, the powers that be were um, sanctioning Zimbabwe. So meaning Zimbabwean dollars were not accepted as trade currency. And then if you can't use your money to trade, your the value of that money just boom goes down. You know, I don't want to get into the political arguments on that, but that's what happens. Hyperinflation now and then happens. So you lose all your savings. When you because the money is supposed to be a good store of value, so Bitcoin, I think, so far, although it's not so old as um fiat currency, but it's old, um, you know, I think 10 12 years going in. Uh, it's not older than gold, gold, I think, it still holds out strong. But Bitcoin is an interesting one. Uh, there are other forms of cryptocurrency or blockchain currencies, so they are competing to be money, I think. But Bitcoin, I think, leads now in being money right so it's a good thing that we are competing for money so by me saying we come from uh, barter trade money commodity money which is uh, beads which is uh, seashells which is um i guess gold and then you know it's it's got an evolutionary trail and then there's competition right maybe beads were in competition with seashells i think gold outcompeted the rest uh out compete at silver right but the it was decided that let's do fiat currency you know the powers that be and we are in a fiat currency standard today and then now bitcoins the centralized currencies are coming to compete so it's quite interesting because we do need money money is a unique problem in that we can make all these innovations but we need something that will be a store of value and it's a difficult concept to sustain because of different uh, demands um there could be fraud there could be all this sort of thing because it's an opportunity it's value it's value that you can trade it for anything else so 
it needs to be stable so that it doesn't just lose its 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 value like in, in maybe in terms of hyperinflation and other i give you an example of um when uh, Des von Rhein was hired as the minister of Ooh, forgive me. Um, is it is it Reserve Bank? Reserve Bank or Minister of Finance? But nonetheless, the value of the rent fell, and um, the PIC lost, which is the Public Investment Corporation, some 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 billions in in value because of that. Yeah, and uh, we might you know talk politics and but it's it, it, government really. Fiat money, it's, it's government, it's politicians having control of um, our money. Sometimes they mess it up, as I've just given that example, right? So, decentralized currency, it's interesting in that it's not dependent on the powers that be, it's just individuals, and uh, it's got, it's a bit, um, it's got some, some, that auto, an autonomy, right? Which is, which is interesting, actually. So, you know, I'm saying all these things to see, that everything evolves in in money language, um, man-made innovations. We are in the fourth industrial revolutions. Uh, flying cars are being tested. There's three D print. All these different things. Because as human beings, we've been innovating for three point three million years ago, maybe over three point three million years ago. So all these industrial revolutions, maybe they'll be, they will be the fifth because we don't ever stop innovating we are that kind of animal if if you think you're not innovating someone else elsewhere in the world is doing that so that's that's the story of biology which gave us this uh, brain that can innovate layer upon layer better than our cousin the chimpanzees better than the birds um and um, and then language came also as a in evolution in that process and then it allowed us to remake some of these innovations and even come articulate novel innovations that didn't well they didn't exist and then they were created right and then money allows us to swiftly trade because remember commodity money not uh, butter trade money was difficult imagine carrying uh, sacks of rice sort of rice and then going to another place to go and transact right that's maybe how markets came about they were adding an efficiency it's innovation that were that was adding, you know, uh, efficiency. Um, so that's that. Um, biology um, comes language, comes money. Comes it's biology, comes language. Biology, which gave us a mind to innovate, and which you can do it layers upon layers. Three point three million years ago, was when the f- the oldest form of of man made t- uh, tools were found, and then today to today, all these different innovations have happened, and then the concept of money came about so we could swiftly trade and then language also became before those so that's the culmination i was just trying to show you i'm tired now it's late i was just trying to show you uh, the relation of 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 of, of money so um yeah I'll, I'll end it here um we can type in your questions anywhere actually email me twitter facebook wherever I'll I'll gladly respond and then maybe I'll incorporate it into other videos I'll, that I'll be making. I think this video was a bit shaky. I haven't done it. I guess it's a new year. But um, I've been done this in a bit of a while. But uh, I guess, you know, I'll I'll get uh, in, I'll get match fit. I want to do a couple of them, more of them. And then uh, that's how we roll. And uh, bye. Uh, it's good night for me. It's quite late now. I need to go sleep i've got a early morning ciao bye